Oh, hey guys. So I am still trying to explore what I call the trucker's hitch Z-rig continuum. Um, if you remember, we have looked at both. Both the trucker's hitch and the Z-rig are essentially trying to do the same thing, which is to generate a three to one mechanical hauling advantage on a rope between a load and an anchor. Um, on the far end of the spectrum is the trucker's hitch, which is very low tech, very low gear, high friction, uh, doesn't even come close to generating the three to one, even though it's set up in the, sim in the same uh, basic form as the Z-Rig. The Z-Rig is on the other end of the spectrum. It's, it's very gear intensive, high tech solution and uh, it, uh, it's, it is the way that we would most closely approach a proper three to one hauling system, okay? So if I, if I want to use a trucker's hitch, let's say I have a, a quick uh, mechanical advantage set up at work and I don't wanna haul all the gear out. Uh, I just wanna set up something quick, but I do have one pulley. So the question is, where should I add the pulley into my trucker's hitch to provide, uh, to give me the maximum efficiency to increase my pull with the trucker's hitch? So uh, I put up a video the other day. Um, I was not happy with it at all. And uh, so it sent me exploring. It sent me down a rabbit hole looking at this issue. And I think I found an answer for you guys. Uh, it surprised me a little bit but uh, I'm really happy that I found this. So my initial answer, what I said was, if I was in that situation, I was gonna add one pulley to my trucker's hitch, I said I would add it at the back. And it turns out that I am dead wrong. And I'm gonna try and show you why you should always add your most efficient hardware closest to the input leg of your mechanical advantage system. So the answer that I found for this comes from a YouTube channel called the Rope Access Channel. And there's a guy na there named Alex and he has a good video explaining this. Now in his explanation, he's talking about a Z-Rig, but as I say, the Z-Rig and the trucker's hitch are very closely related. Um, so his answer is just as applicable for a trucker's hitch, okay? so. If I was to add a pulley at the anchor end, so again, I would refer to the anchor end as the back of my hauling system and the load end here as the front because I'm, I'm pulling against my load. So I always think of it as back and front. So if I was to put my, um, well, well, first of all, anytime we have a pulley where my ropes are oriented 180 degrees, uh, all pulleys have an efficiency rating, right? So a decent pulley might have an efficiency rating of let's say 90%, which means, which means that at 180 degrees, whatever input force I put on the one leg, approximately 90% of that will be transmitted to the other leg and the rest will be lost to friction, right? That's how all pulleys work. Um, now, Alex uses the math that, <clears throat> that as compared to a pulley, when you run your rope through a carabiner, a carabiner can be thought of as approximately 50% efficient, meaning whatever I put on the one side, I'm losing about half of it to friction and only half is getting transmitted to the other leg of rope. Okay. So with that in mind, let's just do a simple calculation here on my trucker's hitch with a pulley at the back, the anchor end. Okay, so if I input 100 units of force here, it's, it's then transmitted through this carabiner, which is 50% efficient. So I have 100 here, on this leg, I now have 50, and this 50 travels down to the pulley at the back, which is 90% efficient. So this 50 turns into 45, right? So my total pull in this system is 45 
plus 50 plus 100. So I have about 195 units total force hauling on the load, right? Now instead, what if I switched them? So what if I took my pulley, I went back to a carabiner here at the back and I put my pulley up front. In this situation, if I'm pulling with 100 units on this side, a 90% 90, 90 efficient pulley gives me 90 units here. And then this 90 travels down to the carabiner where it's cut in half to 45, right? So now my total pull is 45 plus 90 plus 100, so 235, right? So we just went from 1.95 to one mechanical advantage to a 2.35 to one. And that's because you can think of this as a chain where my input force again is traveling through this chain. And each time it goes through a link in the chain, it gets cut down. So my best bet for getting as much force transmitted all the way through to the end of the chain is to not cut it down low right at the beginning, if that makes sense. Um, I should have my most efficient hardware up front, closest to my input, and I should work backwards from there in order of efficiency. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna take you guys out tomorrow. I'll get the cameras out. So I'm gonna do a trucker's hitch with uh, no gear, just a carabiner at the back. And then I'm gonna do a trucker's hitch with carabiner at the back and the front. And then we're gonna do a pulley at the back, carabiner at the front. And then we're gonna do a carabiner at the back, pulley at the front. And then we'll do, at the end, we'll do pulley and pulley, which is a Z-Rig, other than the Prusik cords, right? So um, if I set it up and do it correctly in that order that I just said, what we should end up with is a steadily increasing output force. It should go up and up and up and up. Okay, so the answer, as it turns out, of where should you put a pulley and a trucker's hitch, the answer is as close to the input force as possible. So your efficiency of hardware should work backwards in a chain, backwards from the input force in the direction of eventually all the way to the load. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, Alex on the Rope Access channel explains it much better than I do. Uh, go check them out. They have a, a lot of good videos uh, that you might be interested in as I am. All right, so uh, until next time, climb high, work smart, and read more.